Hello, bonjour, my name is Clayson Benali. Um, originally from Black Mesa, Arizona, Zisajin Dent, Ayusinasha, Aro Kanthana Eshehoan. Currently live in the Flagstaff area and um Shumai Beethachi, my mother is Russian Polish, Ado Shija e Dene, my father is Navajo Dene, and I come from the Bitterwater clan. I'm very uh, honored to, to be able to speak a little bit about the horse, a lot of the knowledge that I've learned from my father and from other elders and the people within my community are about when you learn to connect with the horse, not just horses, with sheep, with livestock, with everything around you, you plant a cornfield, you, you learn how to connect and be a whole person. The responsibility that we have to nurture and nourish our everything within our surrounding is inherent within our philosophy as Hajonje. They teach you from the time when you're a child, you know, you, you wake up in the morning, you pray, you know, even from the point of birth, when you come into this world, your umbilical cord, it's either placed in the earth, buried in a, a place that's sacred or special, or in some cases, like what I've done with, with my daughter when she was born, I took her umbilical cord and I tied it to the horse's mane so that she'll have a connection. This is how we, we learn to be interconnected with what we have surrounding us. In our traditional oral history, they talk about how when the, the sacred mountains were being made, everything was being placed, horses were, were gifted to us at that point. And it was something that was made, you know, by the Creator from the sacred stones, just as we were made and, and placed on this earth. And that connection, it refers to kind of like an animal burden. There's a relationship that we have, that we, we work together, they help carry our, our burden as well. How to to relate with the, the horse where, you know, if you, if you climb on the back of a 1,500 pound horse that is wild, that has no, you know, relationship to you, you're only just now introducing yourself, you've got to build trust, you've got to learn how is this horse thinking, how do they see me, what am I communicating, your body language, everything. They talk about how in the beginning of time we had one language, everything, all animals spoke the same language. The ceremonies that we learned from the horse, their songs, they gave to us. They said, if you're affected by us, this is how you can heal yourself. The eagle did the same. All these different animals, they gave us their songs, they gave us the, the culture that we have. And it's not, we don't look at it as a religion, you know, it's a holistic practice. It's, it's a way of being in balance. And if there's something that you've offended or, or mistreated, there's a way to, to repair that damage. And today, we look at the imbalance that has been created with the land, with everything surrounding us. And we, we know that, you know, people say climate change, you know, the global warming, we have droughts back home. They have created programs and policies to eradicate livestock. Going back to the 1930s when they created the Livestock Reduction Program, and they started implementing that. That's when my father was born. They came and they slaughtered all the animals, every everything that was self-sufficient for our people. And my grandparents, you know, they, they remembered that, that era of mistreatment of everything for us the livestock that's that's our bank that's our self-sufficiency our way of being human of being able to care and provide for our families and today you know going from where we had big vast herds now there might be a handful of families that have just a little and they started doing roundups they started coming through and collecting what they were saying were wild horses even though they were branded and they belonged to families and they were just living where they live on the land you know that's how we live with no fences the, the animals graze we move between summer winter camps we have our sheep we have our goats the cattle and there's a balance when they started reducing even the, the natural predators the wolf you know the mountain lion when you take all those elements away 
it creates an imbalance that is so great and vast that now you have problems of of what they call global warming of droughts of you know certain plants and species that don't exist anymore so when we think of how do we heal this how do we fix those problems you know it's it's the solution isn't rounding up horses and sending them off to slaughterhouses in Mexico. The solution is actually reintroducing natural predators such as wolf, mountain lion, bringing back herds of buffalo, and there's something that scientists refer to as horticulture or permaculture, but that's an indigenous way of thinking that the hoofs actually create the places, the pockets for the moisture to seep back into the ground. And in our tradition, our culture, when the horse runs, they're praying for water. Their hoofs, that's the sound of the thunder. Their breath, the moisture, is going up into the atmosphere. That's calling the rain, and it's bringing the balance. They're praying for everyone, for all life. They're praying for that water, for that moisture, to benefit our cornfields, to benefit the grass that's going to feed everything. So when they are taken from the land and they're not praying for, the, for, that, for that moisture, that water, it's impacting all of us, everything, every living creature. And we're striving to get back to that place where we have a balance, we have a, a natural world that is intact, where the horse, the sheep, the buffalo, even mountain lion, all these can live back in harmony. And that's something that we use these songs, we use them for healing ourselves and we know that we have to carry on our culture, we have to persevere with these, these cultural teachings because that's, that's the solution, that's the way that we're going to, to fix these problems that we see in this world. You know, when you become a leader, all these teachings, all these songs, the, the thing being, the horse songs, it's integrated because you're, when you're teaching or training a horse, you yourself are focused, you're, you're in a place kind of a spiritual reverence, you're, you're giving a, a way, a path. So when you communicate with that horse, you know, you're using an ability that I don't know uh, how, how to explain it, but that's something that our, our elders recognize. There's a strength, and that, that strength that comes from within, you know, it's not always about being hard or, you know, it's just about being secure with who you're, you are, knowing your identity. And the horse, they, they respect that, they understand. And when you form a, a bond with a wild horse that you know has never had a person up on their back, and you ride that horse for the first time, and you come to a place of understanding, is one of the most beautiful experiences. And people that have never ridden, they hop on the back of a horse, they feel the power and the strength. You know, it's very humbling, and they they understand that. Wow, you know, as a human, as a person, you know. Who I am, you know, it, it, you realize how small we are in this universe.